Okay, what's up guys? Welcome back to Covid Clinton. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to add pagination to a website using Django. So I'm going to give you a simple example right now. When you go down to google.com now, you can see when you search for something on Google, on the first page of Google, you'll be, Google is going to show you 10 different links to what you are searching for, you get. So you can see, but in reality, it is Google has over 10 links, you, you get. So those 10 links are for the first page those 10 links i talked about they are for the first page of google so if you click down if you scroll down and click on number two you'll be taking down to another you'll be taking down to this same page but with a set of new links in the style with a, in a new set of links this was done with pagination with that pagination we will have up to over 100 links on a, on a page when searching for something but with pagination we can restrict the number of links or the number of items you want on a page you get so that's what i do i'm going to show you how to pagination to this website you can see this website i have six items but i want what i want to do is i want to make sure that a page has three items i click on page number two another three items you get so that's what i want to be in this video so that's what i do we're getting started right now okay so django has made adding pagination to a website super easy you get so just go down to the documentation you can see what we have here just Django has given us some classes really that's going to help solve our problem with ease you get so I'm going to just explore this first of all we are going to import this pagination this this paginator so I'm going to import this and you can see we have this object this is just simply a query set you get the query set you want to paginate you get so and we have this paginator paginator parenthesis object this object this object we have here is a query set you get from our database and these two means the number of items we want per page you get so now let's start working on that i'm going to go down to my views of pi fi okay views of pi fi so i have okay i'm going to look for that right now okay views of pi so here's my views of pi fi yes so now first of all we're going to have to import this class this yeah this method that kind of easy class or method so now let's import that just paste up at the top no at the bottom okay so we have that there so after we've done that now so because this is our index view and this view is what helps to render these items you see here you get so you get so now let's continue so for the pigeonator for the Pigeonator now we're gonna start right now. So now start like this. So now I'm gonna simply add I'm gonna simply go create a variable called peach. I'm gonna say peach equal to one. I'm gonna say number of items. Let's just say number of items. Num underscore of underscore items. Let's simply say three. And now I'm gonna create a new variable. I'm gonna call this variable let's call it pagination of whatever you like pagination i'm going to call it pagination equal to so this pagination is different from what we, from what we have here again django is case sensitive so this is different you get so pagination is going to be equal to this pagination class we imported so now i'm going to simply say pagination pagination correct and after that now i'm going to add our posts you get so again, i'm going to add the posts so the piece is query set get so just add that post so now square bracket i'm going to add number of items we want to have three items per page so we're going to add this number of items num underscore of items so that's it now so we're going to then okay so after so this page means this page variable we have on top is actually the first page but this is not the best way i'm going to show you how we can add numbers of pages dynam dynamically dynamic oh god i can't pronounce the word okay now we're gonna simply say project so we're gonna simply say posts this post we have here okay so we're gonna simply say posts should be equal to paginator so now dot page it has a page method dot page so now we're gonna simply so we are going to pass the actual page you want to have it on so now we have a variable called page so just put in this page here you could simply just put in one let's just put in page this page we have in the parenthesis is coming from the variable we have on top now so just save your work now save 
after you've done that now come down to the browser and refresh you can see now we only have three items on the page we have three items you get now so if i click on page two i just hope we have the other three click okay just click on just add two to the page click so now go back to the browser you can see we have another we have the we have the other sets of items okay okay so if if you've been watching me recent if you have been watching carefully you find that we've been adding the value of page manually so that's wrong you guess so want to make sure that whenever we click buttons on the front end we should be able to pass a search parameter to the browser you get so this is how we are going to do it right now just come down to this page come down to page add the request dot get dot get just putting a value let's call it page you can call it whatever you like you get so if i go down to this browser now and refresh this page you can see we have an error called page not an integer you know before previously we've been passing an integer value here so now this is i'm going to so i'm going to share i'm going to go about this now so we are going to just pass in a parameter a value to the browser just something like this okay just simply going to say put in the question mark I'm going to simply say page so I'm going to just put in page this page i imputed is coming from this parenthesis the point we have in the parenthesis this page inside of the parenthesis so we are going to set a value for that now i'm going to give it one let's call it one enter you can see now we have our first page now so we cannot be doing this manually on the browser once which whenever i click on all these buttons the airports profile we have here you get so now you, you get so now once i remove this once the user comes to the own page this is what they meet in the url they meet the this main domain and we want to refresh the page you can see Come in, go down to the home page. You're gonna go back to the home page. You can see once this comes down to the main URL, you're gonna have this error page is not an integer. So I want to make sure this does not occur. So just copy this now. Copy, we are gonna so import it. So we're gonna import it now. Based okay, after that, now we're gonna do it. We're gonna we're gonna do a try catch. So now let's try it. Now I'm gonna say try. Okay, so now we're gonna try. If there is no error we're going to run this we're going to use this post but if there's an error we're going to do an accept i'm going to accept it and i copy this error so now if there is an error so if there is no value for page like you see if these are visiting the own page we're going to set the value of page to one you get so let's say that page should be equal to one and now we're going to just copy this stuff again let's just see so go out to the browser now and refresh okay now perfect you can see the value of page has been set to one if nothing has been provided no for this this is not working yet this is going to work whenever we use the button you get so now if there is no value for page from here we are going to set the value of page for to one so now let's assume we only have two pages you get so because we have six items trying to like make sure that three items show per page so that means we're going to have two pages again so if i make if i do something like this let's watch and then set page to be equal to three you know we only have two pages if i try that run this you can see we have an error called empty page because we only have two pages we don't have more than two so once you go once you go beyond two you're going to run the, you're going to you're going to find this error so we're going to simply copy this error that's what we did for the first one copy ctrl c Come down to the browser, come down to the code again, and we're gonna also import it. So after you've done that again, just scroll down. Now we're gonna put another accept block again. I'm gonna say accept. So we're gonna expect that error. Once that error occurs, we're gonna set our page to the last page. We're gonna set our page value to the last page, and that's gonna be called paginator. It should be paginator, paginator dots norm underscore pages. It gets norm underscore pages I just hope this is correct so, okay now just copy this now we're going to put down this post again so now let's see hope it works so refresh the page perfect now we can see we are currently on page 2 when someone visit a page that does not exist we'll be put on the last page we have to get so we last page we have is page is 2 so now that's it now so okay so the next step now is to render out this pagination button dynamically what we have here is kind of static 
since we are gonna do it right now so I'm gonna go down here once to make sure we have the once to make sure we're able to assess this paginator on the on this template called index.html in the get so we are gonna pass this paginator into the context so come down to the context where we have here so now we're gonna simply do paginator okay so that's it now so now we can assess this on the index.html you get so now go down to index.html we can i'm gonna show you the source code we have for that pagination or the paginator whatever it's called it is a code right here you get now so that's it okay so now we're gonna simply run a for loop so we're gonna run a for loop i'm gonna simply comment this first okay i'm gonna follow we're gonna simply do this say for pagination paginator paginator dots uh, making a mistake he's supposed to be supposed to we're gonna pick we're gonna say say for page in paginator sorry for that dot page underscore range understand so all this simply means is that you are trying to get this page underscore range means the number of items we have number of pages we have that's what it means paginator.page underscore range it means the number of pages we have so now i'm simply going to end the i'm going to remove this also let's gonna we're going to end the for loop so now go back to the page now you can see we have three items now we're going to have two buttons now so just refresh oh perfect you can see we have two buttons you get so i'm going to simply come down to the context here and pass in page let's put in page so enter refresh perfect and see we have one and two we have two pages why do we have two pages i'll be saying this several times because we have six items and we are, and we are restricting three items per page that means we're going to have two pages if you have nine items you're going to have three pages you get so now that's it now so after we've done this okay we're almost done with all these things we are doing now so it's actually want to pass the parameter to the browser i want to pass the parameter we're going to use this href so now i'm going to see me do that same thing i've been doing just put in the question mark sign after you've done that you're going to put in page i told you that this page you have here is actually coming from the views of pi this page we have in this parenthesis we get so now after we've done that where are we where are we okay i think okay we're going to simply do that and we're going to simply so equal to equal to we're going to pass this page as a value Understand? just put in the double poly braces again and just put in page so i think that should work okay so see if you work now and come down here refresh the page okay currently remove this stuff remove what we have on the url there so now we're going to use the buttons now so click on page one you can see we're going down to page one you can see we don't have to do this thing manually again so now come down again click on page two you can see we are now on page two is now is now done with the buttons not manually everything working fine you get so click on page three let's add in you can see there's no page three so if i put in page one thousand or enter because we're gonna but we're gonna bring all the last page we have i explained that previously okay so we have we have one more feature we need to have you get so whenever we click on this you can just click on page one Currently on page one, you see. I want to make sure that once we want to make this page one highlighted, I want to make it stand out, I want to give it a background color. Whenever I click on page one, we have the we have this page one highlighted. You can start click on page two. Currently, we don't even know the page we are on, except we look, except we look up on the search bar. But we want to make sure that this this stuff have some background color that indicates that we are on page one. So let's do that right now. Let's go down to my if statement. I'm going to go down to the views of pi file. I'm going to add an if statement. I'm going to simply do if so. Add the percent symbol first. I say if page is equal. This page is actually referring to the page we have up here. So I'm going to simply say if page is equal to. I'm going to say I'm going to point down to this post. Understand? So so we are going to simply say make sure this is recording okay we're gonna simply come down to the index of html and do if is equal to post dot number that's number so it's actually trying to check if our page 
the style is actually equal to the actual page we are on this page is coming from the numbers we place into the buttons you get so if they are both if the page is equal to the number the page number we are on currently if i want to add i'm going to use this particular li tag because it has some kind of highlighting on it so if if this is true we're going to have this return else we're going to have the other i'm going to simply do else else and after that we're going to end the if statement and if okay so now for the first one i'm going to simply just add in a page Okay. Okay, so let's see and come back here again to the first page. You can see we are currently on page two. You can see it's highlighted. Click on page one. Currently on page one, also highlighted. You can see. So it's working fine now. So this is just pagination in simple terms. I hope you really understand. Before I before I end this tutorial, I'm gonna simply do a brief recap. Go on the views of five five. You can see a. We have to set the page. This page refers to the current page we want to set. We are currently on. You understand? So it's we're going to hold integer values or a string, but it's going to be in form of numbers. You get so we are trying to. So you can see here we are actually trying to get whatever is being passed to the browser from this button to get. So now after we've done that, now this number of items refers to the number of items we want per page. Currently we set it to three. You can see now on each page. We have three items on each page. We have three items. Okay, now after you've done that, now our paginator this is simply a variable. This is the class I imported. We're going to just simply do paginator square bracket the post, which is the query sets we are getting. And we're going to put the number of items to get after we, yeah, that's it. Now, after we've done that, now we're going to have post equal to paginator, which is all of this. And we're going to do dot page, and the page in here is what we call what we what we get it from the top. You understand? So that's it now. So after we've done this, now we want to make sure. So whenever you have visit the home page, they're not going to have this parameter passed. They're only going to have the main URL, and if they have only the main URL, they're going to have an error. So now I just make sure that whenever that occurs, whenever that error occurs, I'm going to set that page to one. And that's what we did here, and that's it for this other one. If the user exceeds the number of pages we have, I'm going to make sure we return the last page. I come back to our index index dot HTML file, and we ran some for loop and some each statements to just finalize everything. So we've come to the end of this video. Hope you really enjoyed it. So do it to subscribe and like. We'll see you in the next video.